You're live with The App Show. Mike and John here in studio. We have a great program for you today. Of course, we always talk about the latest apps, but also a lot about uh, the mobile tech world uh, as well. Later on in the program, we're going to be uh, chatting about a new computer that you can make yourself, almost like a little mini laptop. Do you remember the old TRS-80s? I sure, sure do. I bet you have one in your garage. I have two, actually. Oh, oh my God. You're such a nerd. Uh, so this is a, a new type of... Uh, Kind of a flat looking laptop. It doesn't have the fold out screen, but there's a screen on it with a keyboard. Yeah. And it's, it's pretty powerful. Yeah. I mean, think about it like a half a tablet yeah. and half a keyboard. It is pretty cool. And yeah. it's got a thermal printer on it as well. It's, yeah, you can remove it, but yeah. And, and it actually has an expansion port, just like the old, old TRS 80s did. Oh my God. This is so cool. Well, we'll tell you all about that and how you can make one yourself. Uh, we will also be chatting with an awesome app developer out of Winnipeg. Her name is Sharon Knutson. They've developed a Santa Pix app. You can't go to the mall to get your picture taken with Santa. You can do it at home now. You can even dance with Santa. Oh my God. I'm going to dance with Santa. Awkward video coming soon. <laughs> uh, and we'll uh, be chatting about some uh, cool uh, fitness tracker tech gadget uh, items for Christmas as well. So if you uh, know someone that uh, wants to get more into fitness and be able to track things like their heartbeat and their activity, well, we've got some great gift ideas uh, for you from uh, our folks uh, over at uh, Huawei. Uh, let's talk about some of the app news uh, now, uh, John. You've got uh, one of those Amazon Fire TV cubes, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is like a little box that you can hook up to your TV to make it smart. Yeah, it, it has all of the streaming services on it. Uh, obviously, Amazon's Prime Video, but you can also put Netflix, you can put Disney+. Plus. Uh, the difference between this and a Fire TV stick, though, is it's, it's, it's not a tiny little thing. It's actually a, a little box that actually has a bit more horsepower. Looks like the Borg. Kind of does, yeah. 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 So what's the advantage of having it in the box as opposed to the stick? Well, this, the stick is kind of limited in what it can do. Uh, this also behaves like an actual Echo device. So, oh, it's got uh, so Alexa it's, built in. It's got Alexa built in and it actually has a speaker so you can actually interact with it. Okay. Uh, in addition to it, like it doesn't even have to be on or connect or your TV doesn't have to be on for it to work. Okay. So it, it's, it combines a couple different devices. Kind of like a hybrid speaker, smart TV yeah, box. It's a smart speaker that plugs into your TV. Okay. So some news this week, uh, they've actually enabled two-way video calling to it. Yeah, this is actually a pretty interesting thing that I'm kind of surprised it's taken this long, um, but maybe it's a software thing where you can actually plug in any webcam. There's USB ports on the back of this thing. Yeah. And you can plug a webcam in and then it turns it into a video conferencing system. Using your TV. Yeah. Yeah. And so then on the other side, uh, if you have a family member that, you know, they have the Alexa app on their smartphone or say they have an Echo Show uh, one of the five or eight inch display units that has the camera built in, you can actually do free video calling between them. That is so awesome. Yeah. But wouldn't that be cool just on your giant screen? Like you got a big 50 inch screen. Yeah. So any webcam. Any webcam. That is kind of awesome. Yeah. I'm going to try it today. Yeah. I've got an Amazon Echo Show 5. Yeah. We can video conference like nerds. <laughs> uh, what else in the news? Okay. We've got a list here. Uh, Apple, they've revealed their 2020 most downloaded App Store apps and games in Canada. Yeah, so the top free uh, iPhone apps, no surprise. Zoom is the number one. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding, eh? Yeah. 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 By far, Zoom has killed it. They're number one free app in the uh, iPhone App Store. What do you think number two is? I think it's something to do with some dancing videos. TikTok. Yes. TikTok is number two. Uh, number three, Disney Plus. It was got, a bit surprising. You got to watch The Mandalorian on the go. This is uh, very true. Uh, but uh, some of the other ones here uh, are, I guess, in the social and video category. Uh, Instagram, YouTube, Messenger. And number seven, Microsoft Teams. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think the, the probably the big shift with Teams and probably why it's not as high up the list as uh, Zoom is because you actually had to be a subscriber for a while, but yeah. then they opened it all up. Yeah, they, they saw the light, yeah. so to speak. Yes. Hey, we're missing the boat big time uh, on this. Uh, rounding off the top 10 in the top free iPhone apps uh, in the Apple App Store uh, would be the COVID Alert app from the Canadian federal government. That's interesting. Yeah. Too bad we can't use it here in BC and Alberta. Correct. 
uh, and WhatsApp mass- Messenger and Facebook. So a lot of ones that I'm not surprised at. I'm, I'm sure these are in the top 10 every year. Yeah, although definitely I think the pandemic has maybe boosted a few of these for sure. Yeah. And, and, uh, and definitely um, having people stay connected when they can't be connected is, is important. Yeah, very much so. Uh, let's have a look at some of the, uh, the other lists here. Um, co- we'll cover a couple of the top paid apps. Uh, number one, Touch Retouch. I haven't, I haven't used that one. I bet Laura does. Yes. <laughs> she, uh, number two, Procreate Pockets, uh, Auto Sleep Track Sleep, uh, The Wonder Weeks, Forest, Facetune, Sky Guide. A lot of apps I haven't heard of before. Yep. But again, these are all uh, paid uh, top 10 apps. Uh, going to the top free iPhone games, uh, number one, Among Us. Have, I, you, have you seen that game? No. It's crazy. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, the the last week, uh, Jagmeet Singh, the leader of the NDP, played a game against AOC. I'm not even going to try to pronounce her last name. Yes. Uh, in the U.S. Yeah. And they raised like two hundred thousand dollars for people, uh, uh, various needy organizations as as a result of the pandemic. They were just playing this game, and it's kind of crazy. You run around a spaceship, and you have to figure out who the killer is. Kind of like Clue in space. Kind of, yeah. It's <laughs> interesting. Very succinct. Uh, so some other top free iPhone games might be uh, good to look at uh, while you have some time on your hands. Brain Out, Call of Duty, Subway Surfers, Wood Turning. The top uh, paid top paid iPhone games, Minecraft, Plague. That's a, a fun but awful game. Uh, <laughs> Heads Up, Monopoly, and Bloons TD6. So some interesting uh Mm-hmm. Interesting uh, apps there. Looks like we are going to have to take a break because when we come back, we're going to look at the uh, the top uh, wearable gadget gift items. Back after this. We're back with the app show. Mike and John here. Let's uh, talk about some uh, potential holiday gifts that you can get uh, the techie people in your life or the non-techie people uh, as well. Uh, to help us uh, look at some of the stuff that Huawei has uh, this Christmas, we've got our good friend Paul Daco on the line. Thanks for joining us, Paul. Hey, hey, how you guys doing? Great. We're uh, riding it out here in BC. I know you're in Toronto and I, I think you guys are even more locked uh, down over there. Uh, we're making the best of we can right now but with, with this lockdown. But yeah, we're locked down and wearing masks and all that fun stuff and washing our hands frequently. Well, <laughs> let, yeah, no kidding. Uh, let's talk about some of the uh, the gift ideas uh, that uh, you guys uh, have out uh, this Christmas. And uh, and I think, uh, you know, we'll uh, talk about being locked down. You still want to get some exercise wherever you can. And you've got some great wearables that uh, help uh, track and, and, and uh, make the best out of that. Yeah, uh, you know, right now uh, we have uh, we just released the Wash GT2 Pro. It's uh, it's uh, you know from our GT2 series. It's got you know two weeks battery life. You get a hundred plus workout modes, indoor and outdoor, and plus it actually continuously measures your blood oxygenation level. So when you are wearing your mask, you can check to see how much oxygen is getting into your blood as well. So. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, What I found interesting with that particular one as well, um, it it actually had uh, two modes that I I was, uh, uh, was liking. Uh, One is a a golf uh, mode and one for skiing and snowboarding. Yeah, there is those two new modes. Again, that's part of the other hundred plus workouts that we have on here. What's really cool about this too, obviously, is that it looks really good too. So when you are golfing, you have, you know, your, your sapphire glass on top and you have your titanium uh, body on there as well. So it's got pretty much everything you're looking for in a watch, in a smartwatch at this point. Yeah. Yeah. I guess what I like about it too, John, uh, you know, we've had a chance to check this out and try it out. Uh, it looks like a cool watch. You know, it's got all the techie features and the fitness stuff you want in it, like the GPS, it's waterproof. Uh, it's got all the fitness modes, but it doesn't look like uh, you're from outer space. No, it, it looks like a like a like an old school watch that maybe James Bond would wear, kind of yes. thing. Yeah, and you yeah, can get the course. different talk to it. Yeah, sorry, Paul, and you yeah, can do the different watch faces on it as well. Yeah, yeah, different watch faces. You can talk into it. I mean, again, it's like a circular watch. It looks just like any kind of other watch. Just tech hiding in plain sight, you know. So it's it's got it's got a lot of things going for it. Definitely. Uh, another one uh, that you guys uh, have come up with uh, that I was actually uh, really uh, liking, uh, it's uh, called the Huawei Watch Fit. Uh, this one, um, it's got more of kind of the rectangular LCD screen on it. 
Yeah, I'm actually wearing it right now. This is this is actually one of the fun the funner ones that I got. Uh, it fits really nice in the hand. It's got a very large screen on it. And you could also do your workouts and everything along with alongside with this everything as well. Um, you know, sleep monitoring is also a huge part of this too. Um, and uh, all the workout modes you could possibly think of. You know, what I like about this one, uh, like you said, it it is like uh, it's got all those high-end features. It's got the built-in mm-hmm. GPS. Uh, it's got full health monitoring on there. It's got all those different uh, workout modes. Uh, but I, I found this one very simple to to operate. Like this is something that I would even look at uh, getting my parents because it's really easy to scroll like with your finger through the different screens, like from the time to, you know, how many steps you're doing, your heart rate. Uh, it's like it's simple, I guess is what I'm trying to say. It still has got all those, you know, features packed into it, but it's really easy to navigate. Yeah. I I think that's the key that, that really surprised us all is that it actually has a lot going for it. It's not just a basic fitness watch or fitness tracker, um, but it's still easy to use. That can be kind of overwhelming for some people, I think with, you know, the Fitbits and even the Apple watches and things like that, where, you know, there's just a lot of menu diving. Yeah. Little ticky talky menus that you got to get into. So uh, this one, I mean, fantastic for like someone that's really into fitness, but also for someone uh, that wants to get into it, uh, very simple to go through the, uh, the menus. Uh, Paul, you guys also have some awesome earbuds. Yeah, uh, I'm a huge fan of this. This is actually one of my most favorite tech products that we've ever come up with this year so far, which is the FreeBuds, the FreeBuds Pro. Uh, these are true wireless earbuds. Uh, you know, you have um, active noise cancellation built into these guys. I got 30 hour battery life with the charging case. You pretty much got everything you can possibly ever can think of at this point for earbuds with these kinds of models. Um, and it fits right in the ear and it's super comfortable. They're, they're, they're beautiful too. I think they come in a few different colors. Um, they, they kind of remind me of, uh, if you don't mind me saying Apple AirPod Pros, uh, they've got the silicon tip earbuds, uh, but instead of kind of like the circular tube, uh, little, I call them sticks uh, sticking out of them, uh, they're, they're Gems. square. Uh, but, you know, you can actually uh, control many of the different things just by squeezing the little stems uh, on them, you know, turning the different modes. I, I like um, that it has the active noise cancellation. I mean, that is amazing. Like it just sucks all the noise out and you can just hear the beautiful music. But I also like the ambient mode. Like if you are out running, you probably don't want to be too uh, into the music and not hear anything. Like I'd like to be able to hear the cars and stuff around me at the same time. Exactly. With people kind of like waving Heidi or something like that too, right? Within that awareness mode is also a voice mode. So it kind of tunes into uh, people's voices and the frequency of people's voices. So if people are actually saying your name, hey, Mike, how you doing when you're running? Um, uh, they'll actually, it, it, will, it will be able to, uh, to hear that a little bit better for you when you're being sucked into your tunes. And best of all, they're cheaper than some of the other uh, models out there. I mean, you get all of those really high-end features, but uh, the value is fantastic. Yeah, you got your noise cancellation. You got a huge battery life on there. Uh, you have some really big, huge drivers that you can actually listen to a lot of music and a lot of bass with that as well. And the big thing for us here is, um, you know, a lot of people just kind of want to say, why is Huawei getting into the audio thing, right? We have put in a lot of resources around the world and like, uh, like hundreds of engineers to kind of make sure that we have the right uh, recipe to make, to make these earbuds the, most, uh, the, most, the best earbuds we could possibly make at this point. Uh, let's move on to another item that uh, maybe not on everyone's Christmas wish list, but I think it should, uh, a router, <laughs> uh, Wi-Fi for, for your house. And I, I, I want to bring attention to this because I, I know so many people that still have really old crappy routers, Wi-Fi routers in their home. Like sometimes, I, I swear to God, like every day I run into someone um, that has like a five-year-old router. Well, and we get a lot of questions about how do I make my, my Wi-Fi better? And then when we ask them, it's like, oh, I'm using my Linksys router from like the 90s. Yeah, it's crazy. So the latest standard in uh, speed and router technology is something called Wi-Fi 6. And I love this because the industry standards uh, uh, that govern the naming of this, they've actually gone from that stupid name naming convention, you know, 802.11G and AC to like Wi-Fi 5, Wi-Fi 6. So Wi-Fi 6 is the latest standard. And the reason why you want a router that has Wi-Fi 6 is not only for the speed of getting the, you know, the internet to your device, whether that's a tablet or your your robot vacuum cleaner, but also it can handle so many more devices. 
I look in my home and I did a search on my router. I have 60 Wi-Fi connected items because I've got smart switches. I've got robot vacuums and lawnmowers and tablets and phones. Well, not to mention everybody in your house is also on the internet doing their Zoom calls and everything else. Yeah. So, I mean, it's like a highway, right? Like if you've got, you know, thousand cars going down two lanes of road, you can imagine how plugged that gets. So Wi-Fi 6 just opens that up dramatically compared to, to previous versions. I think like three to four times more capacity on there. So I know you guys have a, a, a Wi-Fi 6 router like at a really affordable price. Yeah, it's the, the Wi-Fi AX3 uh, quad core. Uh, and you're right about the speed, obviously. You, know, you can get up to 3,000 megabits a second on this. And to just kind of put that into perspective, that is... Um, uh, that that highway that you're talking about is going to be, you know, it's it's uh, the highway for all the information you have going going through there. It's just going to have a lot more room for it to kind of play in. And you're right about the uh, the capacity as well. You have 60 plus uh, devices that you say in your in your in your house, and that's pretty much on the high end scale, I believe. You know, from IoT devices, uh, the AX3 can handle up to 128 devices simultaneously. Well, I've got a ways to go. <laughs> you got so, a ways to go. Yeah. So this particular one, uh, from what I understand, uh, really great for um, you know condos, uh, apartments, townhomes. Uh, really fantastic for two to three rooms. And uh, it's another crazy feature. I know it doesn't sound like a big deal. It's white. Yeah. It's so actually, it's actually fairly compact because we've yeah. seen some of these other Wi-Fi six routers. And they're like giant drones. Yeah. And they're all black monolithic. Yeah. Like my, my wife is like, there's no way in hell you're going to put that anywhere that anyone can see. But this, this white router, it looks beautiful, actually, yeah. which is a nice feature. And uh, the price is probably one of the best value Wi-Fi 6 routers out there right now. I think 150 bucks at uh, Staples. and Mo- Most of the, most of the Wi-Fi 6 ones are three to $400 right yeah. now. Yeah. So it can't beat that price. Yeah. Hey, Paul, thanks for joining hey. us today. Hey, you're welcome anytime. And uh, you know, it's always a fun time hanging out with you too. Thank you, Paul. Uh, when we come back from the break, more apps to talk about here on the App Show. Stay tuned. You are back with the App Show. Mike and John here. Christmas is coming. And if you've got kids, one of the traditions for a lot of families was to drag those poor children kicking and screaming down to the mall uh, to have their pictures taken with Santa. I remember them with a bit of happiness and apprehension because some of my kids liked it and some just cried and cried. Yeah. You you just never know what Santa you're going to get. No. And how your children will be that day. Well, it doesn't matter because we can't go down to the malls to get our pictures taken with Santa, but there's a solution. There's an app for it. We've got a great guest on the line. Her name is Sharon Knutson out of Winnipeg. She has developed the Santa Picks app. Thanks for joining us, Sharon. Thank you so much for having me. And uh, if you're watching our uh, video podcast of this, you can see Sharon with Santa. Uh, Sharon, tell us how this app solves the uh, the, the mall Santa uh, challenge we're having right now with COVID. Yeah, Santa Fix app allows you to take pictures in your own, own home or outside at, in your backyard. And so you're able to customize your pictures and take as many as you want just from the comfort of your own home. So this is essentially an augmented reality app. So you get your kids you stick them where you want them. And uh, using this app and the camera on your phone, it incorporates Santa right into the picture, right? Correct, yes. We have Santa and you can choose fun different poses for him. We have him sitting in a traditional gold chair. We have Santa doing a yoga pose. And we also have props that you can add to your pictures as well, such as Christmas trees, poinsettias, reindeer. So it's lots of fun to change it and take lots of pictures. I would never have thought of this, but I just think it's brilliant. So, you know, if you are out there and you have kids and wanting to get a picture with Santa, this is a a great alternative right now. Uh, What platforms is it available on? It's available in the App Store and Google Play as well. Uh, The price. It's not like 50 bucks, is it? No, it's (laughs) $1.39. I think most people can afford that. Well, I think people will really appreciate being able to customize and take as many photos as they want. They can use it when their kids maybe are in a better mood. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, exactly. Uh, Sharon, uh, how long did it take for this app to come together? I mean, you know, obviously COVID-19 has just happened this year. Uh, sometimes it takes a while to develop apps. Yes, I, I thought of the idea at the end of July 
And I pitched it to my business partners right away. And we honestly started working on it right away. So the last three and a half months has been very hectic and a lot of fun. Um, and we also have a portion of the app where it, that allows you to dance with Santa as well with music. And you can record 15 <laughs> second videos and post it to TikTok as well. The Santa dance as well? Yes. Oh my God. This, this, yeah, it's this just get, gets better and better. <laughs> oh, the kids have so much fun dancing with Santa. It's great. Uh, are you are you uh, an app developer? Like, how did you how did you fall into this? Um, I'm a partial owner of a software development company called okay. First Descent Software. Yeah. And so I've been around augmented reality for a few years and uh, helped other clients build apps. So you're not just like specializing in Santa software. <laughs> no, no. This is this is my first app. <laughs> We're talking with Sharon Knutson. Uh, she has developed an app called the Santa Picks app, uh, available uh, for Google Android phones and uh, also uh, iOS. Any future plans for the Santa app? You no, know, the more apps that we can sell this year, the more uh, improvements and fun features we could add for next year. So we're going to see how it goes and just have fun. Easter Bunny. You can do an Easter Bunny app. Yeah, we thought of that too. Maybe Halloween. We'll see. Very cool. Well, uh, Sharon, uh, again, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we're excited to actually try this out. We're going to dance with Santa, John. You're going to dance with Santa. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we should post it to the website too. <laughs> yes. And TikTok. Sure. And TikTok. I'd love to see it. <laughs> okay, Sharon. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. That was, uh, that's an awesome app. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, for the listeners out there, the Santa picks app for buck 39. Like how can you lose? No, you can't. Uh, when we come back from the break, still a lot more to talk about here on the App Show. We're going to be chatting about a new little portable computer you can make uh, called the Clockwork Pi Dev Term. Using one of those little Raspberry Pi computers, you can make it's almost like a little mini laptop. Kind of, yeah. Kind of. Well, we'll tell you all about it. Yeah. Stay tuned. You're back with the App Show. Don't forget to hit our website. It's at getconnectedmedia.com. And I'm, tell I'm telling you why. We have a great Christmas giveaway right now, a tech gift basket, and it's got all sorts of great stuff in it. And again, getconnectedmedia.com. Go to the newsletter tab, and that's where all the info on the contest is on how to enter. It's super simple. Uh, but here's what's in it. An Oral-B smart toothbrush, the IO Series 7 toothbrush. This thing will tell you how to brush your teeth better. It is, it is really cool. It's really cool. Uh, we've got an Ancestry DNA kit with uh, a six-month subscription to Ancestry. If you want to know where you came come from, it is awesome. My parents did this last year and they they still talk about it to this day. They mm -hmm. still go to the website and check out uh, you know who they might be related to because uh, you can opt in uh, so people can find you. Yeah. And so they have found all sorts of uh, you know cousins and distant cousins that are out there. Uh, also in this gift bag, Microsoft Surface earbuds. These things are amazing, great sound and a Google Nest Mini. It's worth uh, you know over $800. Yeah, it's not really a basket. It's more like a big container of stuff. <laughs> exactly. Again, getconnectedmedia.com is the website. That's where you want to go to enter. Hit the newsletter tab and everything uh, you need to know is there. Uh, let's talk about a little mini computer you can make uh, using a Raspberry Pi. We've talked about Raspberry Pis before on the show. These are little miniature computer boards uh, that... Uh, uh, hobbyists have been using uh, to make mini computers that can run everything from retro arcade cabinets to media centers uh, to Linux. Uh, like, so you can actually use it as a computer, mm -hmm. uh, cameras, robots, and now you can make a, uh, a terminal. Yeah. I mean, you have to buy the kit. Yes. Um, it, yeah. This is, this is from a company called Clockwork Pi. And uh, about two years ago, they came out with something called the Gameworks. And this was a modular gaming console. It's a handheld console. Looks reminiscent of an old Game Boy. And the idea was, is that you can uh, mix and match and replace various parts inside it. Uh, and they were going to be coming out with uh, a upgrades for it and that type of thing. They've gone another level up and they've made it into a full-blown full, full -blown computer that if you ever used or remember back in the day, uh, I do, um, the Radio Shack had a TRS-80 Model 100. This was, I think, arguably, if not for sure, the first laptop device. I'm, I remember when that came out, John, and I I was so desperately wanted one. It was just amazing. I was uh, you know, in school and I thought, 
I don't have to write notes anymore. I can just type them into this computer. Yeah. But I think it was like $1,100 or something. I remember my grandfather had it. And no. Yeah, he had it. <clears throat> and back in those days, you had to get like a, an acoustic coupler telephone so you can actually connect to a bulletin board or whatever, you know, at the that time. That was pre, pre-internet. Pre-internet, yeah, for sure. Um, but it had a, a, you know, it ran on like double A batteries. Yeah, because it was just like a black and white LCD screen. Yeah. And it, and it was pretty spectacular. It was pretty cool. It actually came with these little tiny legs that you would stick underneath yeah. to prop it up at an angle. Oh, I'm so jealous. Yeah. So, but Clockwork has come up with something called the dev term. Dev term meaning development terminal. Yeah. I mean, I think the target audience for this, or at least the initial target audience would be developers or anyone that wants to do coding on the Raspberry Pi platform. Okay. But it actually has a bunch of features that are really compelling for I think a much wider audience. One of them is the fact that it actually has a, a full color screen. It's got an interesting aspect ratio though. It's basically two four by three screens side by side, but it's one continuous piece. Just so, so just imagine that aspect ratio. A long rectangular screen. Very long, yeah. yeah. It, it would probably be perfect for you know watching movies on it, um, but it also is a very modular system and they actually offer three different versions of it uh, based on, you know, processor power and and memory configurations. But the idea is that it's using basically the Raspberry Pi compute module, which is a little different than the Raspberry Pi three or four computers, but it's essentially uh, just a different version of that. Um, but the nice thing is it's, it's, it's user replaceable and you actually get this as a kit and you assemble it yourself. It's all snapped together. Basically there's no soldering. And, um, but the nice thing is, is everything is interchangeable. And so they've already got uh, their own version of the Raspberry Pi compute module, but they also sell it with just a generic one off the shelf. Um, there's some question about whether it'll be compatible with the Raspberry Pi 4 compute module, which is a fairly new development. Um, but from a spec perspective, this is a pretty powerful little machine that is about the size of a magazine, it looks like. And um, the, the, the really interesting thing is the keyboard itself. It actually has a tiny little uh, trackball built <laughs> it does. in the middle of, of the keyboard on the top. And then on by the space bar, there's actually three mouse buttons. So you can actually one finger or one hand control everything on, on the display. But what's also interesting is on the left side, there's basically a D-pad. And on the right side, there's A, B, X, Y buttons. So like a little gaming it, console. So it, it's meant to be fit in your hand so you can play retro games using RetroPie, which is already compatible with this system. So the price on it is pretty interesting. Yeah. So it starts at about 215 US. So, you know, about 260, 270 Canadian. And it only goes up to about 260. And this is including everything you need. The other really interesting thing with this, it includes a thermal printer. Oh, the printer comes with it. The printer comes with it. Yeah. So this is something you attach at the top of this thing. Yeah. So if you want to, you know, print log files or doodles or whatever you want, it has a printer that it comes with. And it uses basically the same kind of paper that a cash register would have. So you can get, you know, refillable things at Amazon. Yeah. It looks like a cash register receipt printer. Yeah. 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 But it's, it's, it's pretty fun. Uh, I, there's no camera or anything on it. So you, you can't do a Skype call with it, but, uh, but it also runs in these, these, uh, they look like AA batteries, but they're a little bit bigger. They're uh, 18650 batteries. Are they rechargeable? They're rechargeable, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and they're they're very high power. So I think each of the battery can be, and it takes two, each of them can be, I think, three to 4,000 milliamps. So Oh, okay, that's that's a lot. So much more than maybe even your an iPad would have, for example, as far as computing battery power. So when you buy it, you have to put it together? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But it's not that hard. No, no. no. Uh, and so you can use all the Raspberry Pi software out there, like retro gaming and uh, like you can do like Linux on there. Yeah, it's going to actually come with the Clockwork Pi OS. And it's basically a, a, con, a pre-configured version of uh, the Raspberry Pi OS. Uh, so like Raspbian. And so it's going to come with all the tools and software that you would want. And it's all going to be free. It's all open source. Um, it's, it's pretty, like I... I, I pre-ordered one already. <laughs> <laughs> of course you did. Does it have any USB ports or anything? It like has that? all the USB ports. HDMI out? HDMI, yeah. So you could hook this up to a big screen. Yeah. Wow, this is kind of cool. It's very cool. So like, but 
for for I mean we're nerdy and we we've been using these Raspberry Pi computers before. So like I've set up like a, an arcade cabinet with it with all my favorite mm-hmm. uh, arcade games. I've used one as a media center to watch all my movies and stuff on my big screen TV. I've got one in my garage on my tech bench mm-hmm. uh, as a computer hooked up to a monitor using um what is it Raspbian or. Yeah, Raspbian or there's it's a, like a Windows interface. Yeah, I can print things, I can run word processors and Minecraft and web browsers and, mm-hmm. and everything. Uh, so, what would people really use this for? I think it's it's you know it's an alternative to uh, a um, like a Chromebook, right? Yeah. It's, think about a Chromebook as far as computing power. That's basically what this is going to be capable of. But if you're doing like simple things like browsing the internet and and uh, playing some of these games, even coding games. Uh, you want to do word processing. You want to do emails. Like this would be good for schools. Potentially, yeah. Yeah. I mean, definitely for STEM learning uh, yeah. or STEAM learning. But, you know, it's, it, it, it is arguably a niche product. Uh, I just think it's a really interesting form factor that was very popular and very coveted back in the day. And uh, it's interesting that someone's finally come back and, and found a way to sort of do it in a really interesting way too, because the fact that you put it together yourself is interesting. All the parts are modular. So if anything goes wrong, they're easily swapped out and replaced. Um, it's just a really clever idea, I think. And it's, they're pre- taking pre-orders now, you know, and like we said, it's like less around $300 Canadian that includes shipping. And When's, when is it shipping? They're, they're, they're hoping to ship before April. Okay, so, so into the new year. Yeah, it'll be probably early spring before you, you get we get them. But um, I think it's just a really interesting take on this. And you know, for three hundred dollars for a pretty cool, very unique, and very different laptop is not a bad price point. It is kind of cool. Yeah. Um, and again, this is uh, taking advantage of that Raspberry Pi technology, which these are great gift ideas as well. Like uh, we we uh, always get ours from Canakit uh, out mm-hmm. of North Vancouver. They've got a great, great website where they sell all these Raspberry Pi cases and little computing modules that you can put together your own computer and hook it up to a monitor. And they, and well, in Raspberry, Raspberry Pi Foundation just came out with a new version of that, which is the, the Raspberry Pi 400, which is basically a keyboard yeah. with the computer built in. It's, it's super cool. And it doesn't have a screen. You have to plug it into something But this else. is a great gift for, you know, uh, like some kids and teenagers as well, like just to get into that whole kind of hobby computing. Or adults. We, yeah. We know a lot of people that love this stuff. I've got a drawer full of these things because yeah. I just love playing with them. Yeah. It's, it's kind of fun. Okay. We're going to have to take a break. When we come back, we'll tell you a little bit more about uh, the contests back after this. You're back with the app show. Mike and John here. Don't forget to hit the website, getconnectedmedia.com, the newsletter tab, give away that tech gift basket. Smart toothbrush from Oral-B, their uh, IO Series 7. We've got Ancestry DNA kits, a Google Nest Mini, and uh, some earbuds uh, from the Microsoft folks. Pretty cool. I got a new uh, smart faucet. You were telling me about this. This sounds really cool. It is amazing, especially in COVID times. Uh, It's from Moen. And this is something I saw down at CES back uh, a year ago and I thought super cool uh, but it's pricey I think it's around like 700 bucks yes but you know what faucets they can get up there for a good one yeah so this one uh, it has a sensor on the top so you can just wave your hand over it use the force I can use the force to start the water running and then I can just wave my hand over it again to stop it so I don't even have to touch anything which is amazing the best part though John is that it's smart and ties in with uh, Google and also Amazon Alexa. So I can use my voice now uh, and tell basically Alexa to turn the top on, off, certain temperature. But if you're into baking and cooking, it is amazing. And I'll tell you why, because you can tell it to give specific amounts. I thought this was really cool and how it's actually doing this. So I can basically look at my recipe. And so maybe I'm making pancakes, you know, those big Costco size bags of pancake batter, and I need uh, two cups of water. I can basically tell uh, the, the tap to give me two cups. So I don't have to get the measuring cup out. It'll, it'll automatically just do two cups right, right into the, the bowl for me. And you were saying you can also have different temperatures as well. Yes. So two cups of hot water. Yes. And right down to the, you know, 60 degrees or 70 degrees, whatever. That's pretty cool. It is wicked cool. A little pricey. Uh, you can get these at Home Depot, but if you are needing a new uh, faucet for your, your kitchen, uh, and again, these fa- faucets get up there in price pretty quick anyway. If you've got the extra few bucks, uh, it's, changed, it's changed the way we use it. Like We don't ever touch the handle anymore. Everyone just waves their hand over it. 
just like in the washrooms at the mall. Yeah, it is. It is so cool. I, I love it. Uh, again, it's a smart uh, tap from uh, Moen. So all the time we have left, I want to thank uh, John and uh, Christina who helped put the show together. See you again next time. <laughs>